uh, zero trust is always the framework and the first line of connectivity for our users and our applications, regardless where they are. And what this also helps, it de-emphasize the need of the network and emphasize the reliance on the network connectivity and you know the the legacy infrastructure cyber attacks have been growing exponentially in the last few years the attack surface is more significant than ever and threats are more sophisticated than ever to talk about that we have mr wissam saadeddin regional director of mia at the scaler welcome wissam can you tell us about yourself and the scaler yeah, thank you for the intro. So I am Wissam Saladdin. I'm the regional director for Zscaler in the Middle East and Africa region. Uh, I joined Zscaler uh, last year, coming now to my first anniversary. And I joined uh, with a lot of ambitions uh, to build our Zscaler presence in the region, accelerate our growth, and be uh, as closer as possible to our customers and partners to help them in this you know, digital transformation journey they are going through. Uh, Zscaler, um, Zscaler, you know, was founded in 2007 by our founder Jay Chowdhury, and uh, we were like born as a, a secure web gateway, you know, a, a solution, the platform, born in the cloud. But over the years, we kept evolving, you know, our platform to uh, to support our customers and the customer needs. And as we speak right now, we are the market leader you know, in a market segment called SSE, Security Service Edge, uh, as per Gartner and as per a lot of global analysts, uh, which was derived from uh, the SASE framework. Where do you put the GCC on the global digital migration ladder compared to other regions? Yeah, so um, we had obviously a soft start uh, in digital migration in our region like a few years ago. Uh, however, with the support of uh, of the governments, you know, aligned with their vision, like what's happening today in Saudi or UAE, Qatar, and the rest of uh, the GCC countries, uh, digital transport digital transformation is going at top speed. You know, leveraging you know, uh, like the latest and greatest technology, you know, uh, and in the new concepts like SASE, multi cloud, AI, and uh, and many others, you know, uh, to accelerate you know, their, their digital presence and their digital transformation journey. COVID indeed accelerated, you know, that digital migration. And now uh, some countries like UAE, for example, are, ra- are ranked as a, glo- as a global leaders in digital government and digital economy. So uh, basically that gives you a sentiment, where, a sentiment where this region, you know, is right now and uh, where it will gonna be in the next few years. Okay, great. So speaking about migration, what are the most extensive security challenging facing the companies in their cloud migration journey? Yeah, so uh, the Internet uh, obviously is becoming our new network where we everybody is uh, is doing business, where everybody is connecting and it's no longer limited to parameters and boundaries. And, you know, networks today and infrastructure today uh, is become borderless. So what that means and what that, you know, uh, w- and the impact of this is basically raising the exposure of risks and threats and, you know, expanding the attack surface uh, for, for for organizations and putting a lot of pressure on, uh, you know, uh, uh, on business continuity and, uh, and security and, uh, uh, you know, as a whole. Uh, and the way we used to build uh, networks and infrastructure was all around the data center, where the data center was the center of gravity of our, you know, applications, uh, users, security, and like the entire business was running in the data center. However, now when, you know, with digital transformation, users want to be everywhere. They want to connect from, from anywhere. Uh, and uh, we need to support our users to be able to run the business and do their uh, you know day-to-day business from anywhere this is one on uh, but on the second hand as well our applications are now no longer residing in our data center we are now moving our applications to the cloud 
and sometimes we are consuming you know SaaS services which obviously you know uh, bringing a lot of you know threat and uh, risk you know on our uh, users data and, and others on addition to this the complexity and cost that comes with it let's talk about unique threats does the region have what uh, unique threats does the re- this region have and do you have any advice of course to defend against them yeah of course um it's obvious we are living in a in a in a hot region uh, where there is a lot of geopolitical challenges and uh, and conflicts since many years now and uh, cyber warfare was is uh, becoming one of those tools uh, which are used during those you know challenges and conflicts and uh, what does this mean this means government you know entities and critical infrastructure along with uh, other leading you know uh, organizations in our region uh, whether they are in the financial services or you know the private sector are subject to those type of threats and attacks a to to uh, to cause reputational damage and b uh, it's uh, the the data leakage which is uh, becoming uh, w- uh, you know digital transformation and uh, the criticality of uh, of those you know entities is becoming the gold mine uh, for for any organization in our region and the attacks are mainly you know targeting you know data and you know applications uh, and digital presence for you know for those uh, for those applications and the attacks unfortunately it's happening within the region and uh, and sometimes from from countries outside the region you know targeting the middle east okay great so speaking about threats and specifically what happened last year the solar winds hack shook the security world and was carried out due to a compromised user later uber hack was once again carried out due a compromised uh, criticals um how can zero trust security um, mitigate such dangers yeah so uh, uh, again zero trust um, it's not a tool zero trust is a framework and uh, when companies start to you know and organizations start to implement zero trust you know indeed uh, they can uh, start getting a better protection a better uh, you know user experience you know while implementing uh, the zero trust concept so and uh, how this is done is basically where getting users regardless of their location uh, and regardless of their profile to connect and to authenticate with the zero trust platform uh, and where in that zero trust platform all those business policies and security being applied uh, before the user is now connected to the internet or uh, he's uh, trying to connect to a SaaS application uh, or if even he's trying to connect to you know to a private application you know which resides in the data center uh, zero trust is always you know uh, um, you know the the framework and uh, the first line of connectivity for our users and our applications regardless where they are and what this also helps it de-emphasize the, the need of the network and emphasize the reliance on the network connectivity and you know the the legacy infrastructure and obviously that will help you know uh, minimize the exposure of our applications to the internet and protect our users from you know uh, some of the advanced threats and ultimately you know uh, protect our data uh, wherever our data resides whether in the data center or it is sitting somewhere on the cloud okay great so you mentioned zero zero trust security how can zero trust security itself be applied without making it harder uh, to do businesses so, uh, so uh, as I said, uh, zero trust is is a framework, and uh, organizations can start adopting, uh, you know, zero trust, uh, you know, partially and uh, gradually, to to start moving some of their, you know, functions and services into zero trust, in a zero trust, uh, you know, framework. We at Zscaler, we have the right experience, you know, uh, moving large scale customers 
to uh, and transitioning them to our platform we do believe we have the most robust elastic and uh, diversified platform uh, to, to to transition you know customers seamlessly without any impact on their user experience without any impact on productivity to our zero uh, trust platform and uh, you know and ultimately we help them enable you know uh, their business and be more productive to, to their business i'll give you an example here uh, like uh, merger and acquisition it's one of the you know one of the critical use cases uh, for zscaler and to adopt a zero trust uh, you know framework where organizations when they merge or when they acquire uh, they go through a tough transition zero trust you know and having a zero trust architecture it helps you with the time to market it helps you in that transition uh, and it uh, it obviously you know helps you you know migrate uh, and uh, integrate many organizations and many businesses you know without any impact on on users and on their customers great last question in traditional security uh, systems one uh, once the hacker gets in they have a lot of literal movement freedom how do the scalar solutions uh, mitigate that also so a great question um with uh, when, when organizations uh, adopt you know the zero trust framework now users will no longer be able to access uh, the network for them to get to the application uh, however now users will connect to the zero trust where the connectivity will be terminated and we will be able to connect the user straight to the application with a lot of de-emphasis on the network and Accordingly and ultimately, the user, even if he is infected by a malware or a phishing email or he got a phishing email or so on and so forth, the, uh, that threat and that malware will no longer be able to move laterally in the, in the network. A, because the user is not on the network anymore. Uh, and B, uh, because he is uh, contained uh, within the zero trust uh, platform and secured. Thank you so much. It was nice having you today with Sam um, from Zscaler and thank you for this valuable information about cybersecurity and threats and everything around that. Thank you, Ahmad, and thank you, team. You're welcome.